Buckle up for this one. We send our kids to college to follow their dreams. But for one group of Sarah Lawrence students, those dreams became a living nightmare. Larry Ray was released from prison in 2010, and he needed a place to stay. So guess where he moved? Into his daughter's college dorm and slept on the couch. Within weeks, he began coercing and abusing her roommates, eventually orchestrating a sex cult around them. The manipulation and abuse went on for over a decade. He is now in prison, serving a 60-year sentence for sex trafficking, racketeering, and extortion. Now, in the new Hulu docuseries, Stolen Youth, his victims are revealing exactly what happened to them and how they survived. We would stay up in these interrogations until, like, three, four o'clock in the morning. It's like your willpower is gone. We slept when he said to sleep. And we ate only when he ate. Getting me scared enough, tired enough, and hungry enough, I would just make something up. I think it was the, be one of the cops in that kitchen that time. How do you know? I'm pretty sure, because I think he was the one who asked me if I wanted, if I was willing to wear a wire. That, did you? Yeah, I did. The matter was never allowed to be settled. Like, I'm looking for context clues to try and figure out something that there isn't an answer to. Tell me something worthwhile after all these hours. Gonzalez, Gonzalez. Was... Who's Gonzalez? The other cop in the kitchen that... that what did he look like? Um... He was uh, uh, short. Uh, no, no. He no. He was he was pale. He was the, the pale one. This whole convoluted conspiracy started taking form. I start to write memories. Zach Heinzerling joins me now. He is the director of Stolen Youth, which is streaming now on Hulu, and it is haunting every waking minute of my day. Zach, this film, this truth is so disturbing. What made you tell this story? How did you get involved? Well, Daniel Levin, who is one of the survivors, originally spoke to the New York Magazine reporters and asked me to make a documentary. And, you know, for him, this was about potentially helping people that were still under Larry's grasp. Like, when this started, Felicia, Isabella, others were still kind of in the throes of, of Larry. Um, and Daniel felt like speaking out and making a documentary could help, you know, people that were you still watch. Involved, we you know. watch some of these victims go from being in his grasp to pulling out of it and trying to regain normalcy. What what blew my mind from the beginning? He coerced these kids from the comfort of their dorm room. He was allowed to stay in their dorm room. How on earth did that possibly happen? I'm talking to you, Sarah Lawrence. It's confounding. I mean, Daniel tells a story. Uh, there was a cat that was staying in the dorm, and the university made many attempts to remove this cat from the dorm. Because, but not this man, but this yet, 50 year old man who was just released from prison. Larry was allowed to, to stay overnight. So Why? It, it's, I, you know, they still haven't really um, given you know, a, a response that I feel like the survivors feel is adequate, but what they would say is they were unaware that he was there. Um, at the time, there were no reports of him being, of him staying in the dorm. Only subsequently did they find out that he was. How about the police, right? These young people were being physically abused, sexually abused, put into to basically a labor camp. Police never thought this was strange? A I think neighbor? A neighbor never said, why are these yeah. young people working around the clock doing hard labor with excavators in the backyard? I think that's an excellent question. I think it's at the heart of how this happens is it's really about power dynamics. It's really about, you know, people tend to go along with people that present as authority figures. Like Larry essentially was conning everyone, but also there's complicit there's complicity everywhere. There's complicity. There were cops that would visit the house. Larry would talk to them, tell the cops, you know, the, the parents of these kids are drug dealers and bad people. Like, I'm taking care of them. And the, top, the cops would take him at his word. You know, and because they were over 18, um, you know, legally the parents, you know, couldn't just come and, and abduct their children. Um, so it, it, 
It's a very important question. I think how this went on for so long, um, you know, is the heart of the matter. Isn't it amazing, though, oftentimes when, when, you, when you hear, when you read about cults, you think, you know, they're happening in the middle of nowhere, people that don't have access to education or they're not part of big community. I mean, these are really smart young people. This one woman, Felicia, Harvard undergrad, she was on her way to being a doctor. Was that surprising to you? Yeah, I mean, I think that was the, the point of doing this project was when you think of cults, you think of these, you know, particularly damaged people or that they're fringe kind of groups. But here, this shows that this can happen to anyone. You have extremely intelligent people with lots of promise. Um, you know, people need to understand the power of coercive control. Have their families gotten the money back? I mean, he swindled these young people and their families out of hundreds of thousands of dollars, and, and they did not have a lot of money. No, you know, I, I think the reality is, you know, Larry was sort of living in squalor when he was indicted and convicted. You know, it's a, a bit of a mystery where all this money went. Um, you know, he was buying all these tools upon tools and, you know, equipment. Um, that essentially, you know, he sort of, um, you know, was was arrested with, with nothing left to his name. So He's I don't think jail, they'll ever get their money back. Has he said anything about the series? Not to my knowledge. I had conversations with Larry and and really didn't use him in the series because he is, at this point, such a delusional, um, empty person that nothing he says is really credible um, or of value to a project that is trying to show how this happened. Um, you know, I think the version of Larry that they met in college was very different than the version I met you know, uh, last year. I think they met somebody really charismatic and who could tell them about the world and presented as someone with wisdom. And, and um, I think who I met was, was this kind of shell of someone trapped in this sick delusion, you know, that had been kind of metastasizing, growing and, and getting more and more kind of absurd as time went on. And so, you know, he gave the same spiel about this is a conspiracy led by Bernard Carrick and Rudy mm -hmm. Giuliani and George Bush, and they're all out to get me, and I've been poisoned, you know, please help, I'm the victim. Um, and I still think to this day, even, you know, as he was sentenced, multiple victims stood up and said to his face, you know, you have stolen years from my life, ruined my family, like put my mine through excruciating pain, and he couldn't hear any of it. Um, I think, you know, it just goes to show he doesn't have remorse because there's a, this is a real sickness. Um, and I think, you know, it's important that we understand it as that. Well, congratulations on this project. Larry, the master manipulator, is now trapped in his own mind and in prison for the rest of his life, exactly where he should be. Zach Henserling, congratulations again. <laughs>